Hey there, welcome back to another video this time around. It is my thoughts on the E! True Hollywood Story special, The Curse of the Little Rascals. Now, before I go any further, I want to give a special shout out to Vonte for requesting this video. And if there's another film, TV show, or topic that you would like to see me discuss in the future, feel free to donate to my PayPal. The link will be in the video description down below. And I'll try to get to it as soon as I possibly can. Now... With a lot of e -true, true Hollywood story uh, specials from around this time, there's a lot of sensationalism going on in this special, a lot of uh, exaggerations, and a lot of the focus is on this supposed curse of uh, the Little Rascals cast or the R Gang cast because it was originally uh, a series of shorts called R Gang. Uh, if any, if you're a fan of the little, the little rascals, you would know uh, that to be the case. But I know there's some people who aren't necessarily aware of the fact that the little rascals was not really what they were originally called. Uh, the series of shorts was called Our Gang, and it wasn't until years later that the that the shorts were retitled to the Little Rascals. Now. E True Hollywood Story, honestly, at this time, did a lot of these type of documentaries about the curse of some popular IP, the curse of Poltergeist, the curse of The Exorcist, the curse of the Little Rascals, and I will say that I was more into the other curse uh, 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 vi videos or the cursed uh, documentaries that were about Exorcist and Poltergeist, because that's just a topic that I'm more familiar with. But this was still worth a watch. This is still interesting. Uh, I will say that it is a bit tasteless if you think about it because it's kind of taking advantage of some uh, real tragedies uh, that involved real people. And a lot of them really had nothing to do with a curse. In fact, none of this is really a curse. Uh, to answer the question... The uh, whether or not this is this was a curse, which is a question that's asked numerous times throughout this special, the answer is no. This is just an unfortunate series of tragedies that occurred to a select group of individuals. And the group is so large in terms of actors and people who are involved with this franchise that the death toll is only like 9% in terms of uh, tragic unexpected uh or uh bizarre deaths that you could really contribute to being the the cause of a curse at work so that's really the reality here and the thing is that doesn't sell and that's definitely not something that's going to get people to watch the special on e so they just really uh uh embellished the statistics here and they also uh, talked about a lot of other crazy stuff especially involving the actor who played alfalfa that was a real eye opener to me uh something that i was kind of like wow okay that's pretty shocking and i will say this the the way that some of these uh performers passed is pretty crazy uh and i could see why somebody who didn't necessarily know the full details would maybe think that there might be something to this uh curse theory but if you really just do some extra research and see the percentages then it, it's 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 not even remotely the case it's just a tragic uh case of kid actors who didn't really have the same success as adults, weren't given the same opportunities at a time when things were really difficult for them, especially in terms of them being typecast into certain roles, and at a time when there are no residuals. So once the uh, jobs dry up completely, uh, these former child stars, they don't have anywhere else to go. And because they're so used to having this level of fame and having a certain amount of income that's rolling in a lot of them aren't really able to adjust 
to uh, life that doesn't involve them being on a, a set in Hollywood. And that's sad. And it's still reality today when it comes to a lot of child actors, but not to the same extent. Because there was a time when the cast of our gang was every bit as popular and well-known as any other big movie star at the time of this series' peak. Uh, these kids were right on the same upper echelon as Clark Gable or some of these other big stars. And to be put on that pedestal at such a young age in that era, that's something that's very difficult to uh, deal with for anyone, especially a kid, in terms of dealing with that pressure. And then especially dealing with what happens after that all goes away. For some of them, though, they deserved it. They deserved whatever fate they wound up having. Uh, uh, in particular, uh, Carl uh, Switzer, who played uh, Alfalfa, because uh, he just made a lot of bad decisions in his life and was just uh, an all-around troublemaker. And uh, he was even at a young age. Now, they start things off when it comes to the death toll, because they, they, they essentially structured the entire special around the death toll or the, the, the next uh, mysterious death of a, a member of the R gang crew or cast. And they also threw in some other stuff like having like a, a historian and a fan of the R gang shorts come in and say a few words and talk about why he likes the, the, the series and why it's popular and why it's so endearing. And there's a bit of a history lesson about how the R gang shorts were created by Hal Roach and how they wound up becoming inc increasingly more and more popular, how they had a resurgence in, in the fifties when they were retitled, uh, the little rascals, uh, not really a lot of mention of the nineties little rascals, which I thought was kind of interesting because, for a lot of people who probably watched this short or this special when it came out, uh, a lot of them probably were more familiar with the 90s Little Rascals movie than they were the old shorts because this was on E and the target demographic, at least a lot of the time when it comes to the people, the average age of the, the people that were watching that network, they were not like the people who remembered watching the the R gang shorts in the 30s and 40s you know they they were the they were the demographic that remembered seeing the 90s movie and i was i was really surprised that there was no discussion about that cuz a lot of these specials they tend to also touch upon that i think they showed like maybe a poster at one point and the thing is like that's really my only introduction or real experience with the little rascals other than the SNL skits with uh, Eddie Murphy as buckwheat. It, it's the, the nineties little rascals movie like that. That's, that's the peak of my introduction to, uh, that, uh, IP. Like I was aware of the R gang shorts. I knew of them. I knew about alfalfa and his Vigoro routine routine and, and Buckweed and Darla and some of his other uh, characters, but I never grew up watching the shorts. So I didn't really have that connection uh, with the source material or the content like other people involved with this special. So it was kind of like a, a an outsider looking in. And I didn't get as much interest in, in the histor history stuff in terms of the creation of the shorts because honestly, they didn't really go that in depth on it. And maybe did that for like three minutes. Uh, and what really caught my interest uh, more was just hearing the crazy ass stories from the set of these shorts. Mostly uh, from uh, the actor who played Alfalfa, Carl Switzer, who was a absolute terror, apparently. This, this kid was the Joker before the Joker was even a thing. He was going around uh, hitting other kids. 
he was hiding nails in his hand his palms and like stabbing kids with nails he was just being an absolute little shit like he would pee on the stage lights so then when uh they the pee dried and they turned the lights on the whole room would reek of piss uh, <laughs> There was one time where a director uh, corrected him a couple times and he retaliated by taking chewing gum and putting it inside the camera and just gumming it up to the point where they couldn't shoot for that day. Like, this kid was an absolute psychopath and he only got away with it because he was a star. Uh, and nowadays, I don't even know if that kind of behavior would even be tolerated even from a child star. I think a lot, I think nowadays it would just be like, get to pack it. <laughs> like you're fired. <laughs> we are not going to accept this kind of shit. Like, can you imagine like Miley Cyrus on the set of Hannah Montana just being this obnoxious, like spraying people with hairspray and and just being a, an absolute uh troll no that 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 would not be tolerated so and news would spread fast that this child star is uh just unbelievably poorly behaved and someone that you just can't work with and i just felt bad for everyone that had to deal with this little shit <laughs> Because they were, they had the interviews with the people who worked on the set, and they're talking about these stories, and I'm like, wow, like that kid needed to get smacked across the head, head. was thrown across the room, or kicked through a field goal post that's on fire into a vat of lava. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> Jesus Christ, what a terror. And he, he was really the only one that was causing problems. Like some of the kid stars were a little entitled. Like the, act the actress who played Darla kind of was a similar way, but not to the same extent. Like no one was really anywhere near close to being as awful as, as Carl Switzer was. And they then start uh, chronicling the the uh tragic deaths of of, of the, the the cast and and that's really where the documentary just becomes more sad than anything like at the start when you got you're telling they're telling stories about alfalfa's just crazy antics on the set like that had a certain entertainment value to it because you're like what the fuck like what <laughs> that actually happened and then they talk about how, oh, MGM bought the the rights and how Roach is no longer behind it. MGM was doing the shorts and times were changing and and so was film and so was th what, what was popular. And shorts were considered to be uh, really not anything that's really that viable anymore in terms of anything to make a profit for a studio. But they kept on going long past the time that they should have. Then it, there was a revival that happened when the shorts were retitled as the Little Rascals, and they wound up on television. And they then talk about all these other kids who just sadly just didn't make it very long. Uh, and this is this is pretty crazy. Like at least when it comes to like what happened to a lot of these kids. Or, or even Pete the Pup, because Pete the Pup, the original dog who played Pete the Pup, was apparently poisoned to death, which I find to be, that's pretty crazy. Like, that was the first death that the documentary mentioned, was uh, poor uh, Pete the Pup. And, uh, of course, the next focus of, of the documentary is Alfalfa, because they talked about Carl... And his antics. And then they talked about when he got older. He just had trouble finding movie roles. Because he his whole shtick was he was a kid. And he was singing off key. And there was, sort of, sort of, there was something cute about that. And charming. And as an adult that's not charming at all. That's just annoying. 
And honestly, I would argue that that was annoying no matter what the age of the actor. Like, I, I, I never really liked Alfalfa. I thought his shtick was annoying to begin with. So it's not one of those things where it's like, oh, man, like it, it worked when he was a kid. I'm like, I, I never thought it worked. But, you know, it is what it is. But he had trouble finding movie roles. He was typecast because he was the he was the, he played Alfalfa. He's he will always be Alfalfa. He landed bit parts in like It's a Wonderful Life, the the Defiant Ones. He got odd jobs. He was like a bartender, a hunting guide at at points uh, in his life, uh, but nothing seemed to stick. And he wound up getting shot to death over like just a really dumb petty thing that was all his fault where he was working as a hunting guide. There was a hunting dog that went missing. He, uh, and I think it was like a neighbor of his or a colleague of his that was asking him for help to find the dog. He, uh, worked, uh, uh, around, uh, the area in terms of talking to people and going on the streets and his work paid off and then he found the dog but he felt like the reward that he received for finding the dog wasn't enough and that he should get an extra reward or an extra monetary uh a uh, bit of compensation for the time that he put into finding the dog that's the kind of person that carl was and he decided to do this by threatening the guy with a switchblade to give him the money. And the guy did what a lot of people would do in that situation when their life is threatened and just shot him dead. And I'm like, serves you right. Fuck around and you find out, even if you're alfalfa. <laughs> like, like, I mean, dude, what the hell? So yeah, uh, yeah, there was an argument over fifty dollars, and he was shot, and it was it was uh, ruled as self defense by the courts. Uh, Carl's older brother Harold was also apparently a deviant because in 1967 he murdered his girlfriend and then killed himself. So it seems like uh, Carl was not the only uh, uh, bad one in the bunch when it comes to. The Switzer brothers. Then you have some other uh, members of the R gang cast that are chronicled briefly in terms of what happened after the show. The it's not really a show. I mean, what happened after the series ended and and how they died. You have Buckwheat. Uh, he became a film technician with the Technical Corporation. In October of 1980, a neighbor who hadn't seen him in several days entered his home and then found him dead in, in his bed. He had a heart attack. He was only 49. You will notice a trend here that a lot of these child actors, they died young. Uh, uh, Carl was only 31 when he was shot dead, over $50. Uh, his brother Harold was only 42. Uh, Thomas was only 49. And what's crazy about Buckwheat is there was a special on like 60 Minutes... I think in the 80s, they was talking about the R gang cast and they had some guy that they interviewed who said that he was Buckwheat, but he wasn't Buckwheat. In fact, Buckwheat had already been dead at that point for a, for quite a long time. So even the 60 Minutes uh, um, was not uh, totally above screwing things up royally uh, at the time. Because honestly, you know, when even when Carl died, and he was just a little tiny blurb on the paper because uh, uh, the uh, big um, there was a big uh, I think it was, yeah was it Cecil B. DeMille or something I think it was someone like that it was some big Hollywood uh, producer he passed away uh, at the same time so he's the one that got all the headlines and the, and the alfalfa actor was just really down the down the uh, list and honestly good. He, he was just a seemed like a shitty person like i'm sorry you know some people they just 
they're just not good people and they don't do anything to to improve that they do they they don't put an effort into rehabilitating themselves and yeah he was he was a, he was a, an alcoholic and he was this and that and he was typecast and so on but he was a, a an unbelievably difficult actor to work with and i think that definitely poisoned his reputation uh, and 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 just caused so much damage that he he was just forever destined to not get hired and not get that many opportunities in Hollywood because he burned so many bridges when he was a kid. But with someone like Buckwheat, you know, hey, he got a job. He was a film technician for a little bit. You know, he actually stayed in the industry and worked there. He died at 49, but it seemed like he still had a, a decent enough life, could have had a better life if, you know, he got any residuals for his work on the sh on the shorts. But, you know, it is what it is. Uh, Weezer, though, the, uh, the actor who played Weezer, Robert Hitchens, he went into the Army Air Corps and then he was killed trying to land his plane during a training exercise. He was only 19. He was going to be 20 in like a few days and it was like a freak accident. Like, like the it, it was one of those things where it didn't make any sense in terms of how this wound up becoming a fatal exercise. That's the kind of stuff where you do kind of like what I when I saw that, I was like, OK, I still don't buy the curse, but that is definitely a, a pretty strange way to die. Um, then you have Stymie. Uh, he he had a rough, rough time and he he had a lot on his shoulders. Like he had a very big family with a lot of brothers and sisters, and he was helping support them. Uh, when he was working as a kid and then when you know that that work went away and was no longer available to him and neither was that monetary uh of value or that sustenance uh th there wasn't enough to really support his his uh, his family and he did what he could but there's only so much you can do and he wound up dropping out of high school he got addicted to heroin, which was a huge problem. And he was frequently in and out of prison, but he actually beat the habit in the seventies. Like he, he actually did overcome that, which I think is honestly really cool and inspiring, but he still passed away in 81, 1981 at 56 because he had a stroke and then he had pneumonia, which is sad. And see, so that's the thing. A lot of this, a lot of the stuff in this special is just it's just really sad like what happened to darla she contracted hepatitis uh uh, uh darla hood granson uh while in the hospital for minor surgery and she died at 47 and she was one of the few our gang uh cast members that actually went on to have a pretty you know decent career in hollywood she w got some bit parts here and there she did some voice work she uh, was a part of a semi-successful band for a little bit, and it just she she just died in a, in a in a very tragic way. Like I mean, just contacted hepatitis. I'm I'm guessing probably because of just unclean surgical instruments, maybe. Which that's another reason why I'm just paranoid about surgery. Like, oh, are you going to be using dirty surgical implements and then uh, get me infected with? Who knows what? Are they going to leave a sponge in my chest? Are they going to leave forceps in there? Like, I, I just, just the thought of a doctor who's on like no sleep for like three days or more and he's doing surgery on me. And, I mean, that's honestly uh, something that really freaks me out. And I, I, I think, I think I'm not alone on that. I think there's a lot of people who be freaked out by that. I think everyone is somewhat somewhat paranoid about that kind of thing. But yeah, it's that's just that's just awful. That's just so sad. And uh then you have uh the actor who played Chubby, the the overweight husky uh kid. Uh I know maybe I shouldn't use the word husky cuz that's not politically correct. But uh yeah, the over, the the uh weight challenged uh kid uh uh Norman Cheney. And his weight was due to a glandular problem. 
which is which is a still a reality to this day like some some kids and some adults like it's not related to them gorging or eating too much food it's actually a glandular issue if i can say the word uh, apparently i can't but yeah, he had a glandular uh, problem, and by the time he was 17, he weighed more than 300 pounds. In 1935, he had surgery to treat this condition, but this is 1935, so uh, they didn't really know how to handle this in a way that provides the least amount of complications. Uh, it worked. His weight dropped down to 130 pounds. But he never regained his health, and then he passed away at only 18 in 1936. And yeah, that just goes to show you that, yeah, you can technically maybe get a surgery to help you lose weight, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to fix everything, especially if there's an underlying issue that's not just related to the weight. Like if it's just a medical issue anyway, then that just puts too much strain on his body. Uh, he wasn't able to handle that at all. Uh, then you have Scotty uh, Beckett. Scotty was a kid who wore his cap turned to the side of his head. Uh, Beckett, he slid into alcohol and drug abuse when his acting career fizzled out. He had two failed marriages. He had a history of violence, numerous run-ins with the law. He uh, checked into a Hollywood nursing home in 1968 after someone beat him up, and then two days later he was dead. Uh, investigators found a bottle of pills and a suicide note by his bed, but the coroner never was really that clear on what actually killed him. Like, was it the the uh, um, result of him being beat uh, or uh, punched repeatedly in the head, or was it the barbiturates? He was only 38. It seems like he was also just a typical case of a bad seed, just, just somebody who just, you know, just... Didn't really uh, uh, make the right choices in life and was just uh, uh, not somebody that I guess was meant to live a long life because of the choices that they made. I, I mean, that's just the reality of things. Like some people, they the choices they make deliberately shorten their lifespan now, there are cases where people choose the right choices in life and still don't live that long. That's just how life is. But if you're going to play with life and you want to be fast and loose like this, well, you're playing with fire. And if something happens to you that ultimately takes your life, like it did with Scotty, well, the only person you can blame is yourself. Uh, William Froggy Laughlin, he was rear-ended and killed by a truck while delivering newspapers on his motor scooter. He was only 16. Another just really sad one. Like, that one, like, he didn't even do anything wrong. It didn't even seem like he was somebody who was involved with anything debaucherous or anything against the law. He was just doing his job and then just got killed. Uh, you have this guy named, uh, Richard Mickey Daniels, uh, of course, Mickey is the name of the kid, the the our gang, a kid that he played in the shorts. Uh, he died alone in his San Diego hotel room in 1970. He died of uh, cirrhosis of the liver. Uh, apparently, this is after uh, a divorce and after he had been long estranged from his wife and kids. And years passed before his remains were even identified or even claimed by his family. Like that was just how important he was apparently to his family at that point because he was just just completely gone and out of their lives anyway and he was even buried in an unmarked grave then you have uh, robert blake uh who played a kid named bobby in the r gang shorts you might be familiar with him he was beretta in the show beretta he was also the guy who wound up getting accused of murder uh, there, there was this thing that happened with, uh, what was his wife at the time, Bonnie, uh, she wound up getting shot in the head and killed while sitting in her car outside a restaurant where apparently she and Blake had just eaten dinner. Uh, and I think it was like in, sometime in 2002, Blake was arrested and he was charged with her murder. But then in 2005, a jury found him not guilty. Uh, and even... Even the E-True Hollywood story, like, 
the the special mentions like did he really beat the curse and i'm like that's not the result of a curse that's just the result of robert blake either doing a horrible heinous act and a crime against humanity and murdering his wife or and he got away with it like another famous uh, uh television or movie star and oj simpson or he uh was innocent and he was just a a, a a victim here because he was married to this woman who was a stalker and a uh legitimate uh nut and i think i haven't really done a lot of deep uh and uh thorough research on on that case so i don't really want to make any conclusions um uh, but the jury i guess decided there there wasn't enough to convict him of of murder so I'm going to consider him to be innocent, um, at least based on what I know, which is nothing. Now, O.J. Simpson, on the other hand, he did it. We all know he did it. Uh, the rest of the, the, the cast that died, they also mentioned some of those uh, uh, tragic uh, deaths. Uh, there, there was uh, the, uh, the actor who played Pinky Smith, uh, you know, uh, uh, Jay um the freckle face kid he was stabbed to death in 2002 by a homeless man that he 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 decided to befriend and then the homeless man took advantage of him and then stabbed him to death in a desert somewhere and left him for dead even like cut off some of his some of his fingers and just it's just an absolutely awful uh a piece of shit human being who took advantage of this elderly man and killed him and mutilated his body. And the, the, the guy was only 87 when uh, this guy did all of this, by the way. Uh, you had um, the, uh, the kid who played uh, Waldo. His name was Darwood K. Uh, he was like the rich kid with the glasses who competed with Spanky and Alfalfa for Darla's affections. In 2002, he was struck and killed by a hit-and-run driver while he was just walking on the sidewalk. He was only he was 72, so he lived a fairly long life. So there were a couple instances where they lived a fairly long life, at least for the 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 normal uh, life expectancy uh, for men from his time. So that is just the the nature of his death that's just puzzling. Because apparently he got hit in a way that was not really that easy. Like it was, it was just one of those things where the the truck had to get on the other side of the curb somehow to hit him. And it's one of those things you're like, that doesn't make any sense. But li life is sometimes like that. There really are some instances where you're like, oh, there's no way that can happen. And then you see that it something like that does happen. Like this doesn't involve anyone dying, but I remember something that was pretty trippy and weird where uh, I saw in the parking lot at Costco, which is like a it's a wholesale uh, store that sells a lot of goods wholesale for good prices. And in the parking lot was a car that was on its side like this and it didn't even seem like it had that much damage or anything it was just on its side like this not parked like this it was on its side like this as if something happened and it fell off an embankment and then landed like this and there was nobody in it or anything and it was just so bizarre like it really did stick with me because i'm like how in the hell did that happen I still don't know how that happened to this day. Like I, I it's one of those things I'm like, how did this happen? Like even if somebody like did a prank and they lifted the how did they lift the car? How did they do it without anybody noticing in the parking lot? How did they not make any noise? Like how how did this fucking happen? So life is like that sometimes. And you know, it, it just is what it is. Uh, they also mention, uh, 
Well, actually, this special didn't mention these other deaths. I'm looking at a list of uh, some other unfortunate, tragic deaths here. You got like this uh, this actor named Robert Young who played Bone Dust. He fell asleep while smoking in bed in 1951. He then died in the ensuing fire uh, at 33. Uh, you had Dorothy Dandridge. She committed suicide in 1965 after losing all of her money in a phony investment sh scheme. That's so sad. Don't do that. <laughs> like, I'm not saying, I'm not specifically just saying don't off yourself. Don't do that either. But don't fall for phony investment schemes. Like, always get advice from a trusted advisor or somebody that knows what they're talking about when it comes to that kind of stuff. And if it sounds like it's too good to be true, then it is too good to be true. Um, then you have like uh, Kendall uh, Brisbane McComas, who was known as Breezy. He also took his own life after being forced into retirement as an electrical engineer. He was only 64. Um, you also had another one. Trying to remember who it was. They didn't necessarily. I'm going to look up because I think he just died of like a normal. That's why he just died of normal circumstances. Um, so that's why I didn't really mention him uh, because that doesn't fit the narrative that they're trying to tell when it comes to the curse. Because uh, he was like the other overweight kid that was in, in, in the cast and he fought for years to try to get. Uh, equal, not necessarily equal pay, but at least some sort of compensation and pay uh, for these kid, for these adult actors who were having their likenesses used without their permission, and people were making money off of them, and they weren't seeing a cent, they weren't seeing anything, they weren't seeing a single bit of restitution, uh, or residual payment. Residuals is a better term to use, but yeah. I mean, that's the curse of the little rascals. Uh, like I said, I just feel it's just a case of an unfortunate, tragic uh, series of deaths in a pretty wide net. Uh, if you chronicled a population like a, of a small town that's around the same uh, number of people as the actors and actresses who were a part of this series, you probably come up with very similar statistics and very similar uh, instances of uh, tragic uh, demises. But uh, anyway, uh, thanks for watching this video. And until next time, I'll see you later. See ya.